Hey Canucks fans, the Canucks have a chance to get back into the win column with a game in Winnipeg tonight. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Friday, November the 8th. And yes, last night's game was a bit of a stinker. I'd say, you know, I'd put it up there with the one nothing loss in New Jersey near the start of the season as maybe one of our worst performances of the year. Maybe you throw in that uh, 3 nothing loss to Calgary. I, those are the three that stand out to me. But yeah, last night the Canucks came out flat. Chicago is not a good team according to their record. So you'd hope that the Canucks would come out better than that. But they played from behind all night and in the end weren't able to muster enough uh, to, to actually tie up the game and to send it to extra time. So a 5-2 loss to a lowly Chicago Blackhawks team. But the good thing is... The good thing about playing back-to-back -back games are, is that the Canucks don't have as much time to dwell on it. They can learn a few things from last night's game, but now they can turn all their attention and focus to the Winnipeg Jets tonight. Now, two lineup, uh, kind of two lineup decisions I'm really interested up, uh, in. Will they actually dress Sven Berchi tonight? Will he get in for someone like a Louis Erickson, for an Adam Gaudet, two guys that weren't really that noticeable. Actually, Gaudet was okay, but certainly Louis Erickson not playing a lot of minutes, not even playing on the penalty kill. So you're not losing that much if you bring him out of the lineup. So this Sven Berchi, after being up here for a week, finally get into the lineup. That's number one. And number two, with Chris Tanner's injury, the Canucks have called up Jalen Chatfield, so now they have a full roster again. Because remember I talked about yesterday, they had one extra spot. The only healthy scratches yesterday were Fantenberg and Berchi because Mott, Roussel, and Ferlin are all in the IR. So there's an extra spot whether, uh, you know, if, if one of the players goes, let's say Tanev goes on IR, uh, and then we, they have that extra spot today. Actually, they, they don't even need to put Tanev on IR because um, Fantenberg will likely go in, and then on your, on your healthy scratch list, so to speak, would be an extra forward, and then now two extra D, Tanev and likely Jalen Chatfield. Hope that made sense to you. So basically, the Canucks don't have to even move anyone to IR. They have that extra roster spot. Um, regardless of China, how, how long he's hurt for, for now. But what's interesting is what's going to happen with the three pairings. Uh, Troy Stetcher can obviously play up. He played up to the first pairing last season with Alex Edler, played quite well. But you have Jordy Ben's versatility. He can go uh, left side or right side. So the Canucks have a lot of options. They could go with the, let's presume Fantenberg plays, Chatfield doesn't, let's play Tanev's not, let's presume Tanev's not playing. You could go with the least disruptive op option, and that's keep two of the three pairings the same. That's Edler, Myers, Ben Stetcher, and then put Hughes with Fantenberg. What I don't like about that is Fandenberg, it's Fantenberg's first game of the season. I'm not sure if he's going to be up to playing second pairing minutes with Hughes. And I don't want Hughes to suffer and play only third pairing minutes because he's playing with Fantenberg. So I th see that as a least likely option. You could go with Edler, um, with Stetcher, and then Hughes with Tyler Myers, and then Stetcher goes to your top four, and then you go Ben and Fantenberg as your third pairing. That could make sense. You could also put uh, Hughes with Stetcher, a little, little small. Then you still have Edler and Myers. So you have Edler, Myers, Hughes, Stetcher, and then Ben and Fantenberg as your third pair. I could see that happening. Or you can move Jordy Ben up to the second pair and go Edler, Myers, Hughes, Ben. A very solid defenseman would work well with, with Hughes. And then Fantenberg and Stetcher on the third pairing. So all these combinations, the three that I just talked about, um, some of them involve Stetcher moving up to the first line or the second line, or the third line, keeping him on the third pairing, I should say, pairing, not line. And then some, one of them involves Jordy Ben switching spots. Um, so there's a lot, of, and one of them involves Myers coming down. So there's a lot of things we can do. My gut feeling, my gut feeling is that they're gonna keep Edler and Myers together, and then they'll move uh, Ben with Stetcher, and then keep Fantenberg, uh, sorry, Ben with Hughes, and keep Fantenberg with Stetcher on the third pairing. Although, as I say, say this out loud, because Stetcher has experience playing with Alex Edler last year, you could actually go, um, Edler and Stetcher on the top line, and then Hughes and Myers on the second uh, pairing. And I think that would make sense. I keep saying line, I know it's pairing. And then that would leave Fantenberg and Ben as your third pairing. So either of those two ways, if you follow what I'm saying, it's either gonna go like this. I think it's either gonna go like Edler, Myers, Hughes, Ben, Fantenberg, Stetcher, or it's gonna go Edler, Stetcher, Hughes, Myers, Ben, Fantenberg. Hope that makes sense. Hope you're able to follow that. I guess that's the bad thing about not writing a vlog. You can only listen to me talk and hope that it makes sense to you. This is gonna be a very busy weekend for me. It's our busiest work weekend of the year. It's our big uh, youth rally out in Surrey, the one that I, I talk about every year. 
So it's gonna be uh, hard for me to update regularly, but I'll do my best to try it. I'll do one after tonight's game. Not sure how tomorrow's gonna look, given I have work and then a wedding to go to. And then I'll try and do something on Sunday. Maybe not before the game, but hopefully after the game. Regardless, I'm not sure anyone's gonna be dying for my content, but just in case you're wondering why I'm going a, a little more quiet this weekend, because I will have to focus on my, on my work responsibilities. Well, hey Canucks fans, we'd love to hear from you. Do you think Sven Berchi gets in the lineup tonight? That's number one. And number two, how would you arrange the D pairings, not the D lines, but the D pairings tonight, considering that Chris Tanev is out? Would you put Troy Stetcher on the top line with Alex Edler? Would you put him on the second line with uh, Quinn Hughes? Would, I said it again. Would you put him on the first pairing with Alex Edler? Would you put him on the second pairing with Quinn Hughes? Or would you keep him on the third pairing, whether that's with a Jordy Ben or with an Oscar Fantenberg? Leave a comment below and make sure you use the word pairing and not line. Actually, use the word line. Do whatever you want. You can tell I'm, I'm thinking about my work event. But leave a comment below. I love to read, react, and reply as always. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Enjoy the day. God bless. Go Canucks, go.